the 2016 United Nations Climate Change Conference held in the city of Morocco ended last November 18. The medias were so obsessed with the aftermath of the American election that uh, it completely went under the radar. Last year, ah, last year, the conference were, the conference was held in Paris and personally I fasted for 12 days to be in solidarity with uh, Marty Tendall, former moderator of the United Church of Canada and other faith leaders that attended that conference. Uh, the delegate reached a last minute core that might save our planet. That was great. But I said might because 12 months later, many governments are sending mixed messages to the international community. In Canada, for example, the federal recently decided to establish a minimum price on carbon in order to attain the goals that was set by the previous government. However, if the government give its okay to the Kinder Morgan or the Keystone Exile Pipeline project, only one of them, only one of them, could completely offset all the gain we can make by, with the uh, so-called carbon tax. On some days, I look at my six years old son and I don't know what to tell him, unless to be completely and totally stupid or to believe in some sort of conspiracy theory, climate changes are a reality affecting us today and it's only gonna get worse with time. Extreme temperatures, uh, drought, uh, hurricanes, uh, people dying from a lack of food will become the, the new normal our generation might not suffer that much. But what about the kids today? What kind of life are we ending them down? And what will happen when they will have children of their own? Uh, will they be forced to say, well, I'm sorry, my son, but uh, if your life is so difficult because uh, my father or my grandmother did not want to make uh, an effort or care enough about the future of the planet? Is it what's gonna happen? I don't know. The problem is so huge, it's so important, so, so global, that every government, every human being has to join the effort and, and, and work together. And yes, yes, I know, it's easier to say than, than to do. It's difficult to envision a context when everybody would, would work for the common good uh, instead of taking care of one's personal interests. It's hard to imagine that logic and science uh, would trump all other human consideration. We want to believe, we want to believe it could be possible but all the signs surrounding us point to the conclusion that it cannot happen. Reason alone will not save us. Maybe what we need is a vision, a vision that completely defy common sense, a vision bigger than what we can, where we're capable of imagining, a vision totally crazy, like the one we are offered today in the text from the book of Isaiah. More than 500 years um, before the time of Jesus, the city of Jerusalem was burned and battered by powers that might have been unstoppable by, by then. And the prophet shares a dream of the future, completely at the opposite of what could be seen by the people over there. Isaiah foretells of a time when all the people 
will make a pilgrimage to the holy city and they will learn to live according to God's ways. War will disappear, weapon will be turned into objects of peaceful coexistence, sword will be transformed into plowshare, spears will become pruning hooks, and attack drones will be turned into solar panels. And we want to believe this. Oh yes, we want to believe this comforting vision, full of hope. And our heart longs for this uh, world peace. And it would be so easy to buy an Isaiah's prediction and a bright future if we were not constantly reminded about the wars and harm conflicts in Syria, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Somalia, Central uh, America, not reminded about the shootings in our, in our neighborhood, in our cities, the divisions inside our homes, uh, working place, uh, schools, or sometimes even within the walls of our congregations. That the, if we were not reminded that the only way to protect ourselves against the criminals out there is to be armed, or reminded of the famous Latin expression, civis pacem parabellum, if you want peace, prepare for war. It would be so easier if we were not told that there's no other efficient ways to settle conflicts and stop dictators and abusive regimes than using weapons. And yet, oh, we know, we know deep down, we know maybe more than anything else that none of this is as it should be. None of this be, should be assumed as normal or typical. None of this should be accepted with fatality or pessimism. Because once in a while, we need someone who dares to say words that might make no sense, but are still true. Once in a while, we need prophets claiming that another world is possible. Brokenness is not inevitable. Division does not necessarily have the last word. And we can refuse to agree when some insist that, well, it's all business as usual. We can reject the principles, some of the principles that we have received and we have inherited. We can challenge the society surrounding us because the prophet's call for us is, is clear. God has planned something better for us. Something liberating, something just, something transformative. The days are coming, oh yes, the days are coming when God will call in justice for what it is. When God will get our minds off our agenda and our pension for protect our own little investment. When God will repair when we, what we have done wrong. And God will bring this dream into reality by inspiring us to work. Yes, us to work for justice, for righteousness, for wholeness. The days are coming when we will, we will roll up our sleeves and do the dirty job that we keep avoiding to do for years and centuries. And we will see strangers as brothers and sisters. We will build communities where all have a valued place. We will accept transformation and change even if it's not easy. The days are coming when we will stop being observers and we will fully participate in the birth of a new world. And you know what? The season of Advent is the perfect time to begin this journey. Walter Brueggemann wrote that Advent invite us to awaken 
from our numb endurance and our domesticated expectations and to consider our life afresh in the light of new gifts that God is about to give. Advent is all about looking into the future. It's a time of expectation when we search for inspiration for our lives. It is a time when, once again, we place our, all our hopes in a simple baby born in, in the middle of nowhere. In Advent, we're called to remember that the vulnerable child could turn the world upside down and change the course of humankind. I know it does not make sense. I know it, it defies logic. I know it cannot be possible when we're thinking with our reason. And yet, and yet, I'm here, you're there, gathered to prepare ourselves for the coming of what is considered impossible. <sighs> like almost the, all the image that we will see during this Advent season, Isaiah's vision seems to be too absurd, too strange, too uh, out there to be possible. Even if we long most of the day for most of the days for, for healing, for justice, for, for renewal of God's creation, we cannot imagine how it could be possible, how it could be achieved. And most often we simply come to the conclusion that well, we will simply destroy ourselves. There's no other options. However, the prophet challenged us to see beyond what we are seeing, to dream what we cannot imagine yet. Invite us to go beyond our logic and to go beyond our says. Invite us to listen to God, saying despite what you might observe or you might believe, history will end differently. Oh yes, I ain't over yet, just trust me. I'm about to send new hope to the world. Amen. <laughs>